Hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. This is Jill. Have you ever wondered how you can get into the zone of things that you love to do, that you're good at doing, and take away everything else? That's what we'll talk about today. Nothing in life is to be feared. It is only to be understood. Marie Curie. We're going to talk about the book, The Big Leap, Conquer Your Hidden Fear and Take Your Life to the Next Level by Gay Hendricks. This book is really here to help us come over whatever it is that's stopping us from getting those things in life we want to get. Sometimes it's fear, and we talked about fear in the last podcast. What he tries to do is then go after the things that are causing us not to be able to get the things we want to get. How can we actually gain by focusing on the right things? He sums up his book in the following quote. If I can eliminate the behaviors that stop the flow of positive energy, can I learn to feel great all the time? Can I allow myself to go well in my life all the time? And he said that there are some reasons why we never get what we really want and how we get stuck behind some mentalities we have that cause us never to get the things we want. He discusses something he calls the upper limit problem. That upper limit problem is really what holds us back, he feels, much of the time. That we don't really deserve or we're not good enough to get the things we want to get out of our lives. That a lot of people will say, I'm not good enough for it, or I just have really bad luck, or I just don't think very well. I can't get what I want because I'm just not very good at getting what I want. It frustrates him that so many people feel stuck, that they are this close to getting the things that they want in their lives, and they can't just seem to climb that extra small gap that will get them on the path to getting what they want. He says that a lot of people are struggling underneath a glass ceiling, but is completely within their control to remove the glass ceiling. And it's not because you're unable to do it. You're not unlucky to do it. Don't know how to do it. Your problem, he says, is your upper limit problem. What happens in this upper limit problem is that you have a voice deep in your head saying, you're never going to get this. You're never going to get that much money. You're never really going to be happy. You're never going to meet that person who's going to be that perfect mate for you. You keep telling yourself things that constantly bring you back down. And he says that if you can come up with a way of solving this upper limit problem, suddenly all the doors open up for you. So he goes through steps to try to help you get through that upper limit problem. The first he talks about four type of activity zones that we have. And the first one is called the zone of incompetence. It's all the things that we're just not good at. And that there are other people out there who are great at those types of things. But somehow maybe we get stuck trying to do the things we're just not very good at. And then we feel like a failure when we never overcome those things. And it's not so much that you are failing because you're not overcoming these things. You're wasting your time. You're wasting your energy at taking something you're just not very good at and trying to force yourself into being good at it. Your whole focus, your whole attention on something useless for yourself. And so how can you get away from that and get away from the zone of incompetence and all the things that are in there so that you can get to the things that actually make you feel like living life is amazing? And he says the number one way of getting away from the zone of incompetence is just to avoid doing those things completely. Stop trying. Sometimes you have to do things you're not good at. Every job requires you to be a little good at time management. If you can actually find those tasks that put you into the right framework, that's where you're going to get rid of those things that you're not good at. So the next zone that you have is called the zone of competence. It means you're good enough. You do all right. You're fine at it. Maybe you're a decent writer. Maybe you can get by in doing some of the work that other people are good at. It's not your perfect job. It's not the thing you dream about doing, but okay, you can get through it. But he says that when we get stuck in there, we get stuck in what's called a competence trap. So he tries to help people get through those things that they are just okay at. Then the next zone is called the zone of excellence. You're good at it. You do a really good job of doing things in there. He says a lot of successful people get seduced by this zone. I'm good enough. I do the right job. 
I'm pretty good at what I do day in and day out. And he said, this is almost more dangerous than any of the other zones. But if you get stuck inside this zone, you'll never get to what the next zone is, which he calls the zone of genius. The temptation is too strong to just be successful, to just be good at it. And then it keeps us from being the thing that we're going to be amazing at. He says in the zone of excellence, that's where our addiction to comfort wants us to stay. And many times the people around us want us to stay there too. Our boss is happy with us. We're really successful there. Our family's happy with us because we have a successful job. We're doing really well. And when we're in this zone, everyone's really happy. Our family, our organization, we're doing great. They're thriving. We're thriving. It's comfortable for everyone. And they want us to stay there. The problem is if you stay here, you'll wither and die on the inside. You'll never find the thing that you're amazing at, the thing that just makes you thrive on a daily basis. You'll feel comfortable every day of your life. You'll feel good every day in your life. The people around you will feel good every day of their life, but you'll just be satisfied. And he said, that's it. So the next part is the zone of genius. And he said, this is a thing that expresses the very thing that you're great at. The natural genius you have inside of you, the thing that you're meant to do, that you're uniquely suited to do. If you get stuck in the zone of excellence, you'll never reach this last zone. But he said that inside of us, that zone calls out to us. It begs us to come out, and he calls it the call to genius. He says, unfortunately, by the time many of us have reached the age of 40, we've turned out the call to genius. We've heard it complain, whine. It's been in the form of depression, anger, feeling not satisfied, and we just tune it out. And we live in our happy place of the zone of excellence. But he says that we should be listening to this call because that's where it's reminding us to spend more time feeding our natural genius, letting it do everything that it's meant to do by allowing us to achieve the thing that makes us passionate, that makes us excited, and makes us realize that we are living up to our potential. And he said, Given the right tools and a little bit of wisdom, we can learn to heed our call to genius. So that's really what this book is about. It's trying to tell us how can we get back into that zone of genius. So he goes on to talk about the upper limit problem, which is causing us not to reach our zone of genius. And he came up with four ways of identifying what holds us back when we're setting these upper limit problems. And first of all, he says it's important to realize that these upper limit problems, they're not true. They're just holding us back. We may take them as true, but realistically, they are not true. He said that you should write down why it is you're not really getting your full potential in life and just identify those reasons. Maybe you're scared. Maybe you're lazy. And maybe your life is just really comfortable and you enjoy that too much. So hidden barrier number one is feeling flawed. He says that you feel like you're just not good enough to get the things you want in life. I've heard so many people say the most outrageous things about what they're not good at. Oh, I'm just not very good at that. I can't concentrate very well. I don't do those things. But the interesting thing about it is that they can play video games and achieve goals on a video game. They have enough mental structure to plan out how to do a challenge in a video game, achieve those goals, and then figure out how to roll that into success in that game. If you can do it inside of a game or if you can do it inside of your hobby, you can do it in real life. You do not have a fundamental flaw. Hidden barrier number two is what he calls disloyalty and abandonment. That means that you're stuck in this idea that somehow you would be alone or people would stab you in the back or something with your relationships are going to go awry if you actually achieve what it is you're meant to do. It might come in the way of my family's happy that I'm successful and I have a good job. And if I were to go out and find my dreams, maybe my family would be mad at me because maybe we wouldn't make as much money or maybe we wouldn't have as much standing in the community. Maybe people will be disappointed in me if I go after my dreams instead of just doing what I'm doing today. Maybe my parents will be mad at me. The third hidden barrier is believing that if you got successful, it's going to be a burden to you. It's going to be harder on your life. 
maybe you're going to be a burden to yourself. I mean, think about that. So if you were trying to become a world-class podcaster and you thought, well, if I become famous as a podcaster, I'm going to have to spend all my time doing podcasts, all my free time working on this, and all the time that I spend hanging out with my friends or going camping, I wouldn't be able to do anymore because I'd have to be spending all my time doing podcasting. It's just not true. You're going to attain the things that you want in your life the same way you attain everything in your life. It's not that you're going to keep adding more tasks to your life. This thing that is in your zone of genius is going to take over the things that you're already doing. It's not going to be more of a burden. You're just going to replace it with things that you're not great at, you don't love, and those are going to be taken out of your life so that you have the same amount of burden or maybe even less. Hidden barrier number four is the crime of outshining. He says that that means that sometimes you're afraid to actually do the great things in life, that maybe it'll make other people look bad. Maybe it'll steal attention from someone else that you're usually giving attention to. You're afraid that your success is going to be a barrier to someone else. I don't want to do that to them. Maybe you're in a job and your spouse is the breadwinner in the family for the most part. They're doing great. They love their job. They're fantastic at it. And you just kind of have a job that, okay, you do all right in it. But if I were to get the job I dreamed of, if I were to get the job I loved, suddenly they might look less to our children or they may look like I'm trying to outshine them in our relationship. It has nothing to do with that. If you are having that state of energy because you're in your zone of genius, your family will be happy for you. The people in your life will be happy for you. And it's not a burden. He says that we can tell that we're having one of these barriers in a few ways. First of all, worrying. He says that if we're worried, that's a good sign that we're probably hitting one of the barriers that's there. We shouldn't really worry about too many of these things because we're actually achieving the thing we're great at. We're going after the things we're wonderful at. If you can stop worrying about things, it'll make you go farther. He asked you to ask yourself, is there action that you can take right now that will make a positive difference in getting towards your zone of genius? And he said the answer is always yes. There are always things that you can go after and there's always things that you can do that can progress yourself towards that thing that you're meant to do, that you're passionate about doing and you're great at doing it too. He says sometimes there's deflection, which means, oh, I'm not that good at it. And it even comes in sometimes when someone thanks you. So if you're doing a project for them and they say, oh, what you did was great. That's fantastic. And you say, oh, well, it wasn't so hard. I had a lot of help. It's not really a big deal. I didn't really do that much for it. That is you taking the thing that you're really great at and shunning the very thing when someone recognizes it. What do you say instead? You say, thank you. He says sometimes if when we're hitting one of the barriers of our zone of genius, we could get actually into squabbling. We could start fights with people and it's a way for us to get reactive because we're trying to not do the thing we're amazing at. I can't do the things I want to. I'm having a lot of strife inside my marriage. And that squabbling is just you trying to actually avoid the thing that you're great at because of the reasons we had before. You don't feel worthy of it. You don't feel like you deserve it. Any of those things. Sometimes By creating these fights and causing these conflicts in your life, you're actually just trying to avoid the thing you're great at. And then the last thing he mentions is interesting. He says it's getting sick. Sometimes people get sick when they're at the point of achieving greatness. It's a really weird thing. I've seen it before where someone finally got the very thing they wanted and something weird happens. They're just really sick. They feel terrible. They're tired all the time. Or they get injured in such a way and they couldn't possibly get over this injury. They couldn't go to physical therapy and get over it. Instead, I was going to be great, but now I'm injured and I can't get the things I want. It's a really weird way of trying to prevent yourself from hitting that amazing place in your life by physically stopping yourself by either getting sick or getting injured. And if you honestly told me that people were doing this, I wouldn't have believed it. But I remember when I was a kid, someone in my life finally got the thing that they wanted to get. And my dad leaned over to me and he says, I want you to watch this. 
in six months, he's going to be bedridden. I'm like, there's no way he's going to be bedridden. He's fine. Look at him. He's fine. And my dad was absolutely right. He was on the verge of getting everything he wanted. And instead, he ended up getting sick. There was nothing really wrong with him. If you talk to him about what the doctor said, you know, oh, the doctors can't find what it is. We don't really know what's going on. And I think my dad was right. This person was making themselves sick so they couldn't possibly achieve what they wanted. Oh, well, now I'm having problems and I can't get there. So he said the upper limit problem is really in broken agreements with ourselves, lying to ourselves and withholding the truth that we're able to get the things we really want, that we're capable of getting the things we're great at that are inside of our zone of genius. So he said the first step is that you have to start making a list of your upper limit behaviors. What is it that you're doing? Look at the things I just mentioned. Look at the barriers I mentioned before. What exactly is your MO? What exactly are you doing that's preventing you from getting the things you want? Are you telling yourself that you're just not capable of it? Are you telling yourself that if you were to do this, your family would become uncomfortable? Or are you just telling yourself, you know what? Life is pretty comfortable right now. Life is good. I don't need to do these things. So then he says to get your zone of genius together, all the things that you're passionate about, all the things that you're also great at. There are a lot of people who are passionate about things they are terrible at, but this is that combination of the thing that you're uniquely great at. What is that? And go after that. Make up lists of those things. And then he says to make up a story where you're embracing all the things inside of your zone of genius so that you know what your day would look like if you are actually going out and achieving those things. I would get up in the morning and I would feel rested because I wasn't worried about my next day at work in this job that I don't like. I'd get up and I'd make some coffee and then I'd start working on my podcast so I could make myself famous inside this podcasting world or whatever it is that you're good at whatever it is that is inside the zone of genius. Maybe you want to be a writer, you get up every morning and you're writing. Or maybe you want a job where you're a trainer instead of a system admin and you're getting up every morning and talking to a new group of people at your company and teaching them how to be better. But develop that story of what your day would look like if you were totally embracing everything that's inside of your zone of genius. He says what you're doing is you're building a new home where your zone of genius will live. You're showing yourself what that day would look like and what your home would look like there. He says that discovering your zone of genius is what he calls the big leap, which is the whole title of his book. Up to now, he said, you've just been making little tiny leaps, little tiny hops. And even though hopping seems like a safe activity, it's a little less scary, a little less dangerous, and actually taking the big leaps, you're actually limiting yourself. You're confining yourself. You're almost putting yourself in a prison of your own disbelief. And he said, that's where you have to really go after the thing that's going underneath it all. What is your fear actually telling you? Maybe you'll fail. Maybe you'll find out that you weren't really good at it at all. Maybe you'll find out that you're not good at anything. Is you have to realize that that is a lie, that you are just telling yourself these things because you're trying to keep yourself down Primarily because you're trying to keep yourself safe. And safe is not where the zone of genius is. All the time, you're just coasting along in that wonderful zone of excellence. But by never taking that big chance, by never going after the big leap and finding out that all of it's really just not good enough. And maybe we're just afraid that we'll find out that we don't have a zone of genius, that we never really had one. And maybe that's the fear inside of us That's really the thing that scares us the most. So he challenges you to really commit to your zone of genius. Go through and figure out what those things are that are really inside your zone of genius. He wants you to get that, what he says, exhilaration, that purposeful joy that you get when you're there. And it's not so much that you're taking risky things. You may be taking small steps again, but you're doing it towards your zone of genius and not the other zones. And he says that if you can go after your zone of genius, he can promise you as much real life magic 
as you care to experience. So in order to find what your zone of genius is, he said that first of all, you have to ask yourself, what do you love to do the most? Then question number two is, what work do I do that doesn't seem like work at all? Which may be the opposite of what bores me, what makes me very tired. What is it I'm doing when I don't feel any of those things? Question three, he says, in your life today, what gives you the highest level of satisfaction compared to the amount of time you spent doing it? So for me, I was training people once a month, and that was giving me the biggest satisfaction in my job entirely. And how can I do that more? I loved doing it. I enjoyed doing it. And I realized one out of 25 days in my work time, I was excited. I was fulfilled. And how can you get there so you do that more? And then he said the best way that you can get to this zone of genius is what he calls the enlightened no. He says that your whole life will go a lot better once you learn this enlightened no. And the enlightened no is because you're saying no to things that are outside of your genius. Hey, Jill, do you think you could write this paper for me? No, no, I can't. Hey, Jill, do you think you could fix this for me? I know you're very mechanical. Nope, I can't. Because those things, while I may be good at them, I may be successful at them, they're not inside my zone of genius. And so every time you say what he says, the enlightened no to something that does not serve your genius, you will build a stronger foundation for yourself. So that means that your success is not just knowing what's in your zone of genius, not just doing the things that are inside your zone of genius, but saying no to everything else. Even if the thing that you're being asked to do comes with a big pile of cash, you should still say no because it's not bringing you to your zone of genius. It's not strengthening your commitment to get your zone of genius. And so whatever it is that's throwing hurdles in your way, the zone of success, the zone of competence, you have to say no to it, even if it means turning down something that will benefit your life. And he said because he's done that, he works half the amount of time, he gets twice the amount of work done because he, through the power of working through what he's great at, makes the best use of time. Time flies for him because he loves what he's doing. He takes so much enjoyment out of it. He's doing the thing he's meant to do. He's taking that thing he's great at doing. And it just goes outside of the laws of physics and everything else. Because when you're in that zone of genius, you get more done in less time. And that gives you even more time to enjoy your life and to enjoy your genius. Summary. Understand many of the reasons that you don't achieve your goals in life or the things that you're trying to do is because of an upper limit problem. It means that you feel like you don't deserve what you're getting, that you're not capable of getting what you want to do, or that other people will be upset with you if you get the thing that you really want. Two, remember that you want to make sure that you get out of the zone of incompetence. You get out of the zone of competence. You even get out of the zone of excellence. That's the most dangerous one. And work your way into the zone of genius. Three, remember the four hidden barriers. Those are unconscious barriers that will prevent you from getting the goals that you really want. Don't feel fundamentally flawed, like you can't get what you want. Don't feel that this is disloyal or you'll be abandoned by other people if you get what you want. Don't believe anyone who tells you, including yourself, that getting what you want will be a bigger burden, will take more of your time, will take more of your effort. When you get what you want, the effort feels like nothing, you get more done, and you give up the things that you don't want to do. Four, write down a paragraph that talks about what it would look like if you were doing all the things that are inside your zone of genius. What would your day look like? What would your life look like? How exciting would it be? And how energizing would it be to do those things every day. Five, get your zone of genius by thinking about the things that are effortless for you, that time just slips away. They call it being in the flow. Then look at the things that drag you down. Take a long time. Make it hard for you to actually get them done. Time is so slow when you're doing these things because you don't like it. Maybe you're not even good at it. Make sure that it incorporates your unique abilities and the things you love to do. Five. Remember, 
Use the enlightened no. That means anything that is not inside your zone of genius, you say no to. It's not where your time is being best used. Now, obviously, that's easy for you to do when you're in control of your whole life. Any times at work, you can't say no to things. But when you can, make sure that you don't say yes to the things that are not helping you stay inside your zone of genius. Challenge. Pick one thing you're doing today that is not inside your zone of genius. Maybe it's inside your zone of excellence. And say the enlightened no to it. And now for our fun entertainment quote of the week. It comes from Snowpiercer with Ed Harris. I mean, as Gilliam well understood, we need to maintain a proper balance of anxiety and fear, chaos and horror in order to keep life going. And if we don't have that, we need to invent it. Well, maybe that wasn't the most fun quote in the world, but I think that it fits with the topic of this book. He says that if there wasn't such a thing as fear, then they would have to invent it. And I think that's what the book is getting at, too. We create fear in order to prevent change. That's what Ed Harris and Snowpiercer was doing. He was he was trying to maintain his dictatorship. He was trying to control the train as best he could. He allowed the fear of the people in the train to maintain his control. And maybe that's what we do, too. We use fear so that we don't change. And we use fear so that we don't do anything that's a little bit exciting. Snowpiercer and our own fear. They go together. All right, everyone, thank you so much for listening to the podcast. I hope you have a great week. And please remember to tell a friend about this podcast.